Gatorade Thirst Quencher. It's in the MLB. Is it in you? By Southwest Airlines. Nonstop service to over 59 destinations across the country. And by Nissan, who invites you to shift your ride. Welcome back to Dodger Stadium as we await the start of the final game of the three-game series between the Dodgers and the Rockies. Friday night, game one of the series, and it was Odalis Perez in quest of his fourth win of the year. He brought a lot of good stuff to the game, striking out seven. However, in the third inning, he was trailing one to nothing. By the time the fifth inning came up, he Sop Choi hit the first grand slam home run of his career, and the Dodgers had turned it around and led four to one. And later in the seventh inning, J.D. Drew wedged a home run inside the left field foul pole, and that gave the Dodgers a six to one lead. They eventually won six three. Saturday night, Brad Penny went to the mound. Penny looking for his first decision of the year, struck out four, only walked one, in going a strong six inning. He got a big help when Phillips doubled in the fifth inning to score signs. His tourist single left to drive in two, and that brought up Jason Repko. And Repko, who had homered three times this year, facing Joe Kennedy, hit one into the left field seat, and the Dodgers hung a high five on the scoreboard. Repko wasn't finished doing something important. He made a fine running catch of the foul ball hit by J.D. Closser, and the Dodgers won that game 6-2. to two. And with that in mind, looking for a sweep, we'll be back with the ball game right after this. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Sunday to you, wherever you may be. Pull up a chair. It's the Dodgers and the Colorado Rockies, and a gorgeous day. Blue sky, puffy white clouds, and a crowd estimated is somewhere around 40 to 45,000 to see the final game of the three game series. Dodgers trying for a sweep against a Colorado ball club that has really struggled not only in the month of April they are 6 and 15 in April that's the worst month in the franchise history they are also 1 and 9 on the road in fact the only game they've won this year on the road wouldn't you know would be in Philadelphia here's the way the Rockies line up Aaron Miles at second base Desi Relaford plays short Clint Barmas after a marvelous April gets a day off Todd Helton at first Brad Hopp in right Garrett Atkins at third Dustin Moore will move to left field Todd Green behind the plate Corey Sullivan will be in center field and Sean Chacon on the mound. On the mound for the Dodgers, Derek Lowe. The numbers say one and two, but it's more important to look at that ERA. It is only two. Derek started up in San Francisco, allowed two earned runs, and lost. He went seven brilliant innings and still lost. Then in Arizona, he went four and a third, no decision. Picked up a victory when he shut down San Diego four to nothing. Then in San Diego, he did not allow an earned run and had a no decision. Dodgers won that game three to one. And then against Arizona, he really had his only poor outing. He gave up 10 hits and four earned runs and lost. Even then, the Dodgers only scored two runs for him. Back of Derek Lowe with the leather, we'll take a look at the Dodgers. And it's Hesop Choi and Jeff Kent, Cesar Asturias and Jose Valentin. The Dodger outfield changes because Milton Bradley's going to get a day off. So Ricky Lede is in left. J.D. Drew moves over to center. Jason Repko goes to right. Jason Phillips behind the plate. And Derek Lowe on the mound. So for J.D. Drew, he's played a lot of center field. No problem for him. For the Rockies, Aaron Miles will lead it off. One of the things about Aaron Miles, he is hitting very well. And as he checks in at the plate, hitting 316 and better than 300 from either side of the plate. However, as a leadoff man, he seems to violate the description because the job description means as a leadoff man, you figure to get some walks. He doesn't have any. Miles takes his fight. If you ask Clint Hurdle, well, how about your leadoff man not walking? 
he said that doesn't bother me because he gives you good at bats and he gets deep in the count but I wish his on base percentage was better he takes another strike and the count 0 and 2 his on base percentage is 315 and Clint said I'd be a lot happier if it was 375. Strike two pitch on the way is swung on and missed lost by Phillips in the dirt picks it up fires to Choi who had to leave the bag to catch it in foul ground. So there's a rather erratic way to start the ball game as Miles strikes out and reaches and we will see now how the official score rules it. It was obviously low and by the time Phillips recovered and hurried his throw it was on the foul side of the bag and Choi had to leave it. So Miles maybe he doesn't have any walks but now he strikes out and reaches and the batter is Desi Relaford. So Relaford a switch hitter batting left handed low turns throws to first Miles jumps back on the bag Aaron Miles one for one in stolen bases. And the veteran Desi Relaford hitting 300 checking in at the plate by the way. The scorer has ruled it strikeout wild pitch. Low deals and this one is fouled at the plate. 0 and 1 the count. With low a sinker ball pitcher. It's only his first wild pitch of the year. On this lovely Sunday the temperature is 71 degrees here at Dodger Stadium. Beautiful blue sky day. Hope you enjoy your Sunday wherever you are. If things are not going too well maybe this will help get your mind off it. Relaford with Helton to follow and then Brad Hop. Out of a stretch goes low. Derek deals a drag bunt up along first on the chalk and goes foul and picked up by Hesop Choi. Not a bad idea, especially if you're a left hand batter, as Relaford tried to bring it with him and it just peeled off foul. Relaford hitting left handed, hitting 333, right handed, he only has six at bats, but hitting just 167. Relaford in the past, and one good reason why he's in the lineup, he is five for 12 against Low with a double, two home runs, and three walks. Here comes Derek. Fastball is chopped foul on a full swing, and the count 0 and 2. Derek Lowe and Desi Relaford. Well, how about some of the others? Well, Todd Helton is two for five against him. Dustin Moore is two for two. Zero oh and two, the count to Desi Relaford. Low looks down the barrel to get a sign. Now Derek turns, throws to first, and holding on is Aaron Miles. If you weren't watching the pregame show, you would have found out. That Derek Lowe was named after a hockey player, Derek Sanderson. Lowe kind of round shouldered as he looks in to get a sign from Phillips. There goes the runner, Miles, and it's fouled off. So Relaford on a hit and run play fouls it away. Relaford has had 33 plate appearances and he has struck out only four times, so it made sense to run Miles. Also with the Rockies, they are already eight games behind the Dodgers. As bad as that is, there is yet another team worse off, and that would be Kansas City. Kansas City is 11 games behind Chicago. 0 oh and 2 the count, and the pitch is inside, almost hit Relaford. 1 and 2 the count. I always remember the story of the minor league team, the Toledo Mud Hens, when you talk about a bad team. The Mud Hens were mathematically eliminated in July, and the ballpark was condemned, and they had to finish the season on the road. Now, that's a bad team. Derek Lowe, meanwhile, is throwing strikes. He made eight pitches, seven of them in the zone. And working on Desi Relaford, one and two the count. No score, we're just starting. We can see a lot of folks back at left field slowly making their way into the ballpark. There goes Miles, hit and run ground ball to Kent. Jeff makes the play, and Miles moves into second base. For Kent, by the way, he has now handled 122 chances without an error. Todd Helton. So now, Todd Helton coming up. With one out in the first inning as the crowd slowly makes its way into the ballpark. Helton 
for the first time had a streak snap. He had 14 consecutive months where he hit over 300 until this April. And Todd takes a strike and they count 0 and 1. This April he hit 267. Rod Carew had a string of 16 months from 1973 into 75 where he hit 300 or better and Larry Walker had a streak of 15 months. Heldon takes outside one and one. Helgen and Clint Hurdle are good buddies and they also needle each other. And they were asking Clint Hurdle about Helton. And Clint typically tongue in cheek shook up the press conference. Low ready in deals and that's low. Hurdle said if he doesn't improve with the bat. Now you're talking about one of the great hitters in the game. Hurdle said if he doesn't improve with the bat he's going to find himself in Colorado Springs. So they said that to Heldon and Heldon said if I'm in Colorado Springs he'll be managing in the Northern League. And tit for tat. Two and one the count to Todd Helton. He doesn't have to prove anything to anybody. We all know what a hitter he is. Helton, in each of his first seven major league seasons, just tore up the league. And the pitch to him is swung on a high fly ball to right. Lede coming over near the line and make it Repco. And Repco making the catch and tagging up as Miles going to third. The Dodgers kind of scramble the eggs in the outfield today. Yeah, Ricky Lede is in left. Jason right Repco off. is in right. And J.D. Drew in center. So held in a fly ball to Jason Repco. And with two out, the batter is Brad Hopp. So Lowe giving up a fly ball in the first inning. A little surprising. You know, he thrives on ground balls that kill a lot of worms. And the batter now, the left hand hitting Hop, who has done well. Hop was three for four last night with a home run and two RBIs. He takes a strike in the count on one. So in the month of April, Hop hit 380. And he had four home runs, 13 runs batted in. With a runner at third, low deals. There's a line drive bullet into right center field for a base hit. The run scores. And just like that, the Rockies are on the board. I was going to say just before Hop Betting hit that ball, it is no surprise that Helton would hit a fly ball. You have a lot of left hand hitters in the lineup for the Rockies, and traditionally, the majority of left hand batters like the ball down. So you're facing a sinker ball pitcher, and it will indeed be strength versus strength all day. So a strikeout on a wild pitch is the key to the inning. It should have been a one two three inning but it wasn't and the Colorado Rockies take a one to nothing lead. Now the batter is Garrett Atkins. Interesting little angle here with Atkins the batter and Bill Miller the plate umpire Garrett fouls it away. Bill Miller received a bachelor degree in history from altogether UCLA and of course Garrett Atkins graduated from UCLA. Bill Miller, born in Vallejo, lives in Aptos, California. Garrett, it's a ground ball to short as tourists to Kent. They get the force, but the Rockies get a run. A strikeout and a wild pitch. And the unearned run is cashed in. One nothing. The Rockies cash in a hitter who struck out on a wild pitch and lead the Dodgers one to nothing. Here's the way the Dodgers will try to get it back and then some for Jim Tracy. Cesar is tourist. He sopped Choi and J.D. Drew. Jeff Kent, Ricky Lede, and Jose Valentin. Followed by Repco, Phillips, and Blow. Dodgers concluding a very good month of April. Wound up 15 and 8. Again, Sean Chacon. The right hand already and delivers his tour. Fouls it off to the left out of play and the count 0 and 1. His tourist batting 333. His tourist, by the way, in contrast, let's say to Aaron Miles, has at least walked five times. Not that he walks a lot. Chacon ready in the strike one pitch, low and inside. One ball, one strike. Sean Chacon on the mound, the kid born in Anchorage, Alaska. Right hand already in the 1 1 pitch on the way, and that's outside. Ball two. 
Many, many years ago, and every time I see him, I think of it, there was a song, Sam, You Made the Pants Too Long. Yes, that was the actual title, a 2-1 pitch, a strike. And every time I look at Chacon, I hear, Sam, you made the pants too long. Not that you expect a cuff, I guess, but uh, he really has the droopy draws. The 2-2 pitch swung on, hit foul into the right-hand hitter's box. So his tourist is still there, 2-2. Two and two. For Chacon, as he kind of walks around inside the pants, what was that gag during the war? I thought you were supposed to be at attention. Yes, sir. I'm at attention. My clothes are at ease. Well, Sean Chacon's pants are at ease. Fastball is lined to left, but right at Dustin Moore. So his tourists, a line drive out, one away, and they've already the used the leather, so let's take a look at the Rockies. They'll start with Helton and Miles. Relliford making only his second start at short this year but he can play almost anywhere on the field Garrett Atkins at third more Sullivan and hop in the outfield Chacon and Green behind the plate and the batter is he sop Choi who had that big slam the other night he sop hitting 259 and takes a look at a pitch low and inside ball one Choi appeared as a pinch hitter last night was called out on strikes night before he walked twice and hit the slam out in front of an off speed pitch one ball and one strike the count Sean Chacon three and five lifetime against the Dodgers six three about two hundred and fifteen pounds Choi hits a high fly ball to right center field but it looks playable and it's going to be Corey Sullivan the center fielder making the catch. It was an off speed pitch a straight change and Choi got it but not quite enough so two down. Chacon has had his moments against the Dodgers good and bad. He blew a save when Sean Green hit a two out two run home run on an 0 and 2 pitch last year. And in six games against the Dodgers he gave up 10 earned runs and walked nine. Here now is J.D. Drew and he takes low ball one one and oh. But the good for Chacon two years ago he had a two hitter in eight shutout innings. So he's got the stuff the pitch to Drew very high ball two. He also had seven shutout innings without a walk at Dodger Stadium that summer. So Sean Chacon has been through the mill. And the 2 0 pitch on the way is low ball three. Last year the one number that really bothered him he might have had 35 saves but Chacon allowed a lot of runners to get on base. So he's now a starting pitcher and he allows one to get on now as he walks J.D. Drew. So that will bring up Jeff Kent. Kent at 37 certainly showing no signs of slowing down. Jeff playing every inning of every game. He's handled uh, 122 chances without an error. He's hitting 333 with a half a dozen home runs, and he has 18 runs batted in. So Drew at first, two out, one nothing Rockies. Chacon set and deals, and the pitch in for a strike. Let's see about Chacon and the Dodgers. Kent is seven for 23. That's a 348 batting average. However, no Dodger in the lineup has a home run against Chacon. Strike one pitch on the way, misses low and inside, ball two, two and oh. Jason Phillips, three for six against Chacon. So Kent waiting, one and one the count, two down, Drew draws a throw, dives back to the bag. Chacon, the last time he faced the Dodgers, Went five innings, allowed four runs, seven hits, walked four, struck out two, and picked up the victory. Rockies won that game 8-6 at the expense of Odalis Perez. The pitch to Kent is low. So after walking Drew, he is now behind to Kent. Two balls, one strike. Chacon looks in, getting a sign from Todd Green. The pitch to Kent is swung on and missed, and the count two and two. 
when you pitch for Colorado naturally you have to pitch at home and you're going to be victimized but Chacon has only allowed one home run in direct contrast to left handed Joe Kennedy who started last night Joe's given up seven Chacon right foot on the rubber looks to get the sign now Sean ready he's 27 years old he'll be 28 two days before Christmas Sean Chacon went from the bullpen back to the starting role last year his record was one and nine mostly in relief the pitch is a breaking ball strike three call Kent can't believe it he just stands there drops the bat and the helmet body language tells you he disagrees at the end of an inning Rockies one Dodgers nothing. One nothing Rockies second inning Derek Lowe a big sweeping breaking ball off the plate one ball and no strikes to Dustin Moore Moore on the DL just coming back he's one for nine and Dusty swings doesn't get it and the count one and one well looking down at Derek Lowe we were talking about Sean Chacon it is the modern look because Lowe is just about dragging the bottom of his pants in the dirt pitch fouled off. One and two the count. So I guess if there is one big difference between the modern day player and let's say the player of uh, 30 40 50 years ago in those days neatness counts. Low checking one ball and two strikes. Derek turns and comes back one two fastball hit up along third charging scooping and throwing on the run is Valentin to get him. So more a slow roll to the third nice play by Jose one away and Todd Green coming up. How rare is that he Sop Choi has not gotten a message yet everyone else has the droopy draws down around the ankles except he Sop. I liked it better in the old days but I'm sure the players tell you that they didn't like the idea that the pants were binding around the the knee or high up on the calf though so it's for comfort and the pitch to Todd Green right hand hitting catcher in for a strike and the count on one one nothing Rockies if you weren't with us miles swung and missed on a wild pitch and reach first two outs later he scored on a single by Brad Hop. the pitch down and away to Green one ball and one strike. Low with the puka shell necklace around his neck. He wears it for good fortune. The 1 1 pitch, fastball hit in the air to right field. Repco is there. Jason comes up and makes the catch for the out. So, if nothing else, it is a little surprising for Low to have gotten five outs and two of them fly balls. When Derek is on his game, you see an awful lot of ground balls. And now here is Corey Sullivan. Sullivan appeared as a pinch hitter last night and struck out. He appeared as a pinch hitter the game before in single fouls the first one back. And the one game he started against the Dodgers in Denver, he had a single, a double, and a triple. And he has eight for his last 13 at bats. Corey Sullivan. Low stares in to get a sign and Sullivan tired of waiting and backs out. Derek turns ready in the strike one pitch and that misses inside. One ball and one strike. Sullivan getting on base not only with base hits in his last 15 plate appearance he's been on base 10 times he fouls a pitch away. And the count to Corey one and two. They have some fine young outfielders. Meanwhile, Chacon waiting on deck. Corey Sullivan is out of Wisconsin and he went to school at Wake Forest. The pitch to Sullivan is nubbed in front of the plate. Phillips is on it and throws him out. So the Rockies go one, two, three, but at the end of an inning and a half, Rockies one, Dodgers nothing. 
Rockies leading one to nothing as we go to the bottom of the second inning. Pretty little miss and some company with pink hats. The girls and boys are here of all ages on this lovely day. And now checking in at the plate, Ricky Leday takes a soft curveball for a strike and the count 0 and 1. For the Dodgers, finishing up April, it was the best April the club has enjoyed since 1984. Strike one pitch on the way, that's outside. In 84, the Dodgers were 17 and 8. This year, 15 and 8. And one thing the Dodgers are sure doing, the faithful are coming. The 1 1 pitch is fouled away. The Dodgers average home attendance the best in the major leagues over forty nine thousand for the average. And talking about a successful April you know Jim Tracy. Has the best winning percentage in the month of April. Of any of the managers over the last five years. The pitch of the day low in the count two and two. The so Jim has gotten his ball club off and running and that's so important. 2 2 pitch is fouled at the plate, so Lede is still there. We'll also have kind of a higher octave in the cheering today because the Dodgers are welcoming more than 3,000 youth baseball, softball players, their coaches, and families. They had 12,000 last night, part of the Dodgers Play Ball LA program. And we're thrilled to have them here. 2 2 pitch and Lede has a look. It's low ball three. Three and two the count. Waiting his turn on deck. Jose Valentin. Now the 3 2 pitch coming up. Chacon delivers. Fouled off. For Sean Chacon, trying to keep the Dodgers off the base paths last year, I mean, he was pitching out of the stretch during the anthem. He allowed 128 base runners in 60 innings. I mean, every time he looked up, somebody was having a party. 3 2 pitch, and Lede lifts it up into that puffy white sky. Backing out is Relaford. He's hollered off the ball. Sullivan makes the catch as Moore hits the dirt to get out of the way. So, one away. A reminder Tuesday at 7 10, the Dodgers host the Washington Nationals. For $2 True Blue Tuesday, presented by General Motors, you can get top deck, reserve level, and pavilion tickets for only two bucks. Purchase tickets online at Ticketmaster Outlet locations or at the Dodger Stadium advanced ticket window, so don't be on the outside looking in. Here now, Jose Valentin, a strike. One out, second inning, one to nothing, Rockies. Jose hitting 211. Back comes Chicon and the pitch is high. Third base has not been a hot corner as far as the offense is concerned. It's been ice cold. Valentin hitting 211. Nakamura 156. Valentin takes a strike and the count one and one. Now Chacon ready in the 1-1 pitch on the way, and that's hitting the air to left field. Going back a few steps is more, and Dustin makes the catch for the second out. Two down. Jason Repko coming up. A report, Eric Gagne made 35 pitches in the bullpen, and he mixed them up. Fastballs, curveballs, change-ups. Said no pain, so that's very good news. Meanwhile, you may remember Wilson Alvarez pitched three days ago. And he could very well be activated tomorrow or Tuesday. So here is Repco. Jason waiting takes inside under the elbows ball one. Repco is a rookie. If you ask him how you feel he would say honestly say yeah terrible. The 1 0 pitch on the way and that's a strike and the count one and one. He's been bothered I guess with a touch of the flu. First from the head to the nose to the chest to the stomach and everything that goes along with it. Repco takes low ball too, but when you are a young player battling for a job, we're going to have to kill you to keep you out of the lineup. And Repco last night, remember, had that two run home run, a three run home run in the fifth inning. 2 1 pitch to Jason, and that's off the plate, and the count three and one. Hard curveball, pretty good fastball in the low 90s, that's what you'll get. 
and a good changeup from Chacon. Three one fastball on the inside corner three and two. He has also developed a cutter on the sidelines and they say he used that against left hand hitters. So three and two the count to Jason Repco. And the next one is low ball four. Chacon and it's all part of his rhythm does a little toe tap. Certainly from a wind up just before he uh, releases the ball. So now Jason Phillips coming up with Repco at first and two out. Dodgers have had two base runners on two walks. And remember there's been a pattern in the series. Friday night and Saturday night. The Dodgers have been held hitless in the first four innings. And then somehow. They come back and win it. Phillips takes a strike. Dodgers against Jason Jennings were no hitted for four innings came up with four in the fifth went on to win it six to three close play at first then last night the Dodgers were no hitted for four innings from Joe Kennedy came up with five in the fifth inning to win that one. So Phillips looking for the first hit early in the game. Chacon at the belt and deals in the dirt nice save by Todd Green. One ball and one strike to count. Pitcher Derek Lowe is on deck, so the Dodgers are not going to gamble on the base paths. Phillips now backs out and checks with Glenn Hoffman. Phillips hitting 302. He has a dozen runs batted in. Another throw and just getting back is Repco. I mean, that was very close. The word on Chacon. Is that he has an exceptional pickoff move. Exceptional. That's in direct contrast to Derek Lowe. They run wild against Lowe. In Lowe's games, the opposition has stolen eight bases, and Dodger catchers have only been able to throw out one, eight out of nine. And of course, when Derek pitched in the American League, he gave up 34 stolen bases. For Chacon working hard, this will be his 21st pitch of the inning. And it swung on a high fly ball down the left field line. Moore coming over in the corner and makes the catch on the track. So Phillips slaps his hands together in frustration. He just missed. And at the end of two, one nothing Rockies. Rockies lead the Dodgers one to nothing in the third inning. And it'll be Sean Chacon to start it off. Chacon, Miles, and Relaford in that order. And Derek Lowe set to go to work. On the scoreboard, Atlanta edged the Cardinals 2-1. to one. Philadelphia beat Florida 8-6. Giants knocked off Pittsburgh 8-3 as Chacon takes a strike. Houston. Leading Chicago 9 3 in the eighth. Strike one pitch is swung on and missed 0 and 2. Arizona is leading San Diego 2 0 in the third inning. That's Javier Vasquez and Woody Williams in San Diego. The pitch is away and the count 1 and 2 to Sean Chacon. Chacon has never had a reputation of being much of a hitter. They say he has worked hard. Low deals way outside and they count two and two. The Mets and the Washington Nationals will be tonight. So the Washington Nationals are in Washington to play a night game. That means an 805 game. 2-2 two -two pitch a comebacker. Low has it underhands the first one away. So if you're the Washington Nationals you got to figure you play an eight o'clock game. That's over at eleven. If you're lucky, you'll leave the ground at Dulles, maybe at uh, 1.30 in the morning, maybe a five, five and a half hour flight, that's seven. Subtract the three hour time difference, they will land here about four in the morning tomorrow, and then play the Dodgers tomorrow night. The first pitch to Miles in for a strike, and they count 0 and 1. So, Loiza and Erickson starting Monday night. Next one is fouled off. So the Dodgers playing the Washington Nationals. 
course the Dodgers got to Colorado in the wee small hours it's all part of the scheduling and this time it's the Nationals turn. Oh and two the count to Aaron Miles low into the wind up deals and a fly ball to center backtracking a little bit it carries over his head in fact and goes off his glove and J.D. Drew picks it up on the track and gets it back in. J.D. playing a day game at Dodger Stadium in center field and for the first time is looking into the wedding cake the multi tiered Dodger Stadium and he never had a bead on it he thought he had it and the ball just kept carrying he leaps in the air but it goes off his glove. So Drew misjudging what will probably be ruled a triple a double and Desi Relaford coming up if you're playing in the outfield you look in it can be a nightmare and especially his first game in center and it will go as the double although naturally between us center fielder would have caught it Bradley the pitch to Relaford is high ball one. So for Derek Lowe he's got to think well now what kind of a day is this going to be I strike out a guy he reaches on the wild pitch and scores now a fly ball to center is played into a double one ball and no strikes to Desi Relaford the next one is off the plate ball two. strange kind of a follow through by Derek Lowe almost as if he fired that pitch in disgust two and all the count. Relaford switch hitter batting left handed grounded out in the first inning has a look at a pitch that's low ball three. So Derek kind of wandering around out there on the mound trying to figure out about that puka shell necklace and just how much luck it's bringing him today. Three balls and no strikes they count J.D. Drew who is a fine center fielder but a little rough at the position right now. And the 3 0 pit in for a strike. If you are old enough, your mind goes back to the 1966 World Series. The Dodgers in Baltimore and a very good center fielder by the name of Willie Davis had an absolutely nightmarish World Series playing in the daytime here. 3 and 1 the count to Desi Relaford who backs out. 1 nothing Rockies, we're in the third. Aaron Miles with a gift double at second base. Low out of a stretch, a look back, and the pitch of the plate swung on, popped up. Valentine comes down the line and makes the catch for the second out, but not the third. So the Rockies get that extra out, and who do you think is trying to take advantage of it? None other than Todd Helton. Helton flied to right in the first inning. He is two for six going against Derek Lowe. A mark of consistency. What a hitter. So Heldon waits. Lowe set, ready, and deals. And the first one is inside, ball one. On deck, the left hand hitting outfielder, Brad Hopp. Rockies one, Dodgers nothing in the third. Lowe's next pitch, a sinker is low. Ball two, two and all the count. Heldon giving an opportunity if they pitch to him to pick up Miles. Lowe again ready. Right handed deals, and that's outside. Ball three, three and oh. Rockies one run, two hits. Dodgers nothing across but a couple of walks. Now the 3 0 pitch to Helton who could be swinging but he takes on the outside corner at the knees three and one the count. Helton who has had. Almost a hundred plate appearances has struck out six times. Three one pitch is driven to right going back on the ball as Repco reaches up to snare it and that's that. So Helton, a uh, line drive out to the right. They leave Miles, and at the end of two and a half, one nothing Rockies. One nothing Rockies. One man who empathizes with J.D. Drew, former outfielder John Shelby, and Drew explaining, and no doubt Shelby saying, "Yes, son, I know. I've been there." 
And the first pitch to Derek Lowe, low and inside, ball one, one and zero. Oh. Chacon ready, Sean comes back, fastball hit the straightaway center, but Corey Sullivan is there. So we have one out in the third inning. You know the Dodgers host the Braves on Friday, May 13th at 7:40, and the first 50,000 fans will receive a rally towel, courtesy of 76 Pro Clean Gasolines and the Automobile Club of Southern California. So call 1-866-Dodgers or log on to Dodgers.com for more information. Dodgers following Wednesday night's game hit the road, Cincinnati and St. Louis come home. To play Atlanta, Florida, and Anaheim. So here is his tourist, fly to left in the first inning, and he takes off the plate, ball one. His tourist with his on base percentage moving up each year. Right now at a high of 370, takes a strike. One ball and one strike. It certainly went unnoticed, there was no reason to report it. But what a super throw he made last night. He takes a pitch off the plate. He went in the hole to take a base hit away from Preston Wilson who runs very well. And somehow on one leg made a great throw to first base. It was just one of many plays throughout the game lost in the shuffle but boy he can really play short. Two and two the count to Cesar Asturias. Here comes Chacon, the right hand that comes right back, and a shot up the middle for the first hit of the game for the Dodgers. And when the ball is bobbled and kicked by Sullivan, thank you very much, Asturias just moves to second base. Sometimes I have a feeling that on Sundays, the defensive skills have been eroded by all the night games. It just seems that way. And as Sullivan kicks a base hit, the Dodgers get a break. It'll be one and one, a single to center, and the error charge to young Corey. So the tying run at second base, one out, and here is he's hop Choi. Choi flied to center in the first inning. So the big left hand hitting country boy out of South Korea. And here comes Chacon working low and inside ball one. One run two hits for the Rockies no runs one hit for the Dodgers we're in the third. Chacon set at the belt. Now the 1 0 pitch and Choi hesitates and takes low ball two to an 0. Chacon throws a slider but usually not to left hand batters that's when he throws the cutter here's the 2 0 pitch on the way fastball but it's low ball three on deck J.D. Drew the so Choi has a look at Glenn Hoffman with the count his way three and zero. his tourist backing away from second Chuck Relaford directly behind him the 3 0 pitch, and that's a strike, and the count 3 and 1. Glenn Hoffman shepherding his tourists, and Choi back up to the plate. Here's the 3 1 pitch from Sean Chacon, swung on and foul back, and the count 3 and 2. Nice crowd taking advantage of a lovely day in the ballpark. Crowd has to be somewhere 40, 45,000, maybe even more than that. And we can still see some people coming in back of left field. Three and two the count to Hesop Choi. Chacon is ready. Right hand that delivers off speed and high. Ball four. So he tried to change up on Choi, but it wasn't even close to the strike zone. So for Chacon, he has walked three, given up one hit. For Clint Hurdle, he has to be thoroughly frustrated by his pitching staff. In game one, the Colorado pitchers walked 10. Last night, they walked five with a wild pitch, and now Chacon has walked three. And J.D. Drew, who walked in the first inning, coming up. 
Two on, one out, third inning, one nothing Rockies. Chacon out of a stretch, set at the belt. Sean comes way outside, stumbled in his delivery. Another changeup. So he's thrown back to back changes and neither one even close to home plate. So Todd Green goes out to talk to him. One thing Chacon is doing, and we've talked about the fact he's just thrown back to back changeups. He rarely, if ever, used the changeup when he was a reliever, when he was a closer. It was one hard pitch after another. So his tourists at second, Choi at first, one out in the third, one nothing Rockies. And J.D. Drew on a 1 0 count looks at a fastball low, ball two. Drew hitting 259, but you know he got off to that horrific start. 0 for 25, so he's had to really hit to get his average up that high. Belts one foul down the right field line into the stands, and the count two and one. On our Dodger dugout show today, preceding the game, talking to J.D. Drew about a home run he hit against Matt Clement when he was playing in St. Louis. It traveled 514 feet. Here's a 2 1 pitch, and that is low, ball three. So if you're sitting in the stands, I don't think you're too impressed with J.D. Drew's physique. But he's about 6'1", 200 pounds, and he has a lot of sock. Produced 30 home runs last year. Here's his 3-1 pitch to J.D., and that is low. And the Dodgers have loaded the bases. Four walks given up by Chacon. Bob Apodaca goes running out to the mound to talk to Sean. And Jeff Kent will be coming up. So after low fly to center, his tourist singled, handcuffed Corey Sullivan for an error. That allowed his tourist to reach second. Then Choi walks and Drew walks. And here comes Kent. In case you're wondering, Jeff Kent has 11 grand slams. He hit one in September last year, number 11 against Cincinnati. Second baseman, Jeff Kent. The other night, Jason Jennings would have his pitch total in balls and strikes, and that's exactly where Chacon is. He's had 29 that missed and 28 that were strikes. The other night, Jennings, 86 pitches, and 43 balls, 43 strikes. So here's Kent, and it's inside, ball one. So Chacon is really pitching backwards behind to every hitter. Bases loaded, is Suris, Choi, and Drew are all out there with one down. Kent waiting. Chacon comes back with a breaking ball off the plate. Now it's two and all. Kent. Had a lot of strength last year, led the league in scoring fly balls. Dodgers taking their leads in the 2 0 pitch to Jeff. Chacon delivers, swung on and missed, breaking ball down and away, a good one. Two and one to count. Kent coming into the game was hitting 348 against Chacon, seven for 23, and for Chacon. This pitch coming up will be his 22nd. He made 21 pitches the previous inning. 2 1 pitch. Fastball low. Ball three. Well, you would assume a veteran power hitter like Kent, it will be up to him whether he wants to swing or not, three and one. That would be an assumption. So. The crowd now getting into it as Chacon looks down the barrel to get a sign. His tourists, Choi and Drew, take their leads, and Kent decides to let Chacon hang out there, and he backs out of the box. Three and one to count as Sean squints in to get a sign. Out of a stretch he goes, and the three-one pitch is lined to left, base hit. His tourist scores, everybody just goes 90 feet. Kent hit the ball so hard, a one hopper to Dustin Moore and left. So the Dodgers have tied it up. Jeff Kent, a line drive single, 
That means Drew moves to second. Choi stops at third, and his tourist came home. The so Jeff Kent really drills one, and that will bring up Ricky Lede. So we have a 1 1 tie here in the third inning. Lede flied to center in the second inning, and he's coming up with one out. Two slams in his career. His last one was five years ago against knuckleballer Tim Wakefield of the Red Sox. The pitch to Ricky in the dirt. A great save by Todd Green. Oh, that would have meant a run. So Chacon, who does not have a wild pitch this year, but he is wild today, is walked four. So he has walked nine and struck out 12. So he's been fighting his control all year. One and oh the count in a one one tie. Chacon delivers swung on and fouled upstairs directly behind home plate and the count one and one the so called fastball alley. Fastballs wind up straight back most of the time. Rookie 0 for 1 hitting 3 0 4. Dodgers with Choi Drew and Kent out there and one down. The 1 1 pitch and Lede hits one down the left field line slicing foul. Going well back into the crowd. One and two. Ricky with a home run, seven runs batted in. He had a pretty good game in Colorado recently. Two for three with a double and two RBIs. Hoping to come up with a clutch hit now against the Rockies. Chacon out of a stretch. The one two pitch fastball and that's foul back. Hitting back of the day Jose Valentin. So in the inning low made out his tourist single took second on the arrow by Sullivan. Choi walk drew walk Kent single to drive in one and we're tied up one one. The one two pitch coming up Chacon's fastball is swung on and foul back. Chacon who has been clocked anywhere around 92 to 94 but he that was when he was in relief. He's been right at 89 in the first three innings. Clint Hurdle leaning on the railing and watching the Rockies will fly to San Diego. That's right. They will fly from Los Angeles to San Diego. They have their own private plane. A reminder of the way things were with the Dodgers years ago. One two pitch very high ball two. So the Rockies go from Los Angeles to San Diego to Florida and then home. For Sean Chacon this will be his 30th pitch of the inning. In Colorado, he had a 40 pitch inning. Right hand is curveball on a check swing for strike three. A big slow curve, 71 miles an hour, and Ricky could not hold up. So, kind of a gutsy pitch to throw with the bases loaded and one out to a left hand hitter. Slow curve in the dirt, and Ricky committed. So two down Lede going back to think that over and Chacon now sees a little daylight at the end of the tunnel. Here's Valentin who flied to left in the second inning. Sean into the windup and the pitch to Valentin that's low ball one so there he is pitching behind again. Valentin has seven grand slams the last one two years ago in Kansas City. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way. Chacon delivers, swung on and missed. 1 and 1. Choi at third, Drew at second, Kent at first. 1 and 1 the count. Chacon nods yes, rocks and turns the 1 1 pitch, swung on and missed. 1 and 2. So despite the fact he has been fighting wildness, Chacon has a shot now of getting off the hook. One and two, the count to Jose Valentin, batting 207. And he's gone back to his windup. 
There's the one two pitch a little toe tap and delivers and it's fouled away. Chacon from a stretch does not do it but when he pitches from a wind up his foot will tap the dirt just before he releases the ball all part of the trigger mechanism and he'll do it now pitching from the wind up one and two to Valentin the tap and the pitch a curve in the dirt and actually he almost threw that away something happened to Chacon when he went to tap he almost stumbled and fell. His foot just didn't tap it slipped on him and he almost fell down threw it away. So two and two the count to Jose Valentin. Bases loaded one one tie third inning. Here comes Chacon and the fastball is hit foul in the lower deck down the right field line and Valentin is still there two and two. Jose with two home runs 11 RBIs Chacon really laboring now 75 pitches and he's not out of the third inning. Sean ready. Here he comes to two and it's swung on and missed. So Lede and Valentin strike out Lede on a slow curve Valentin on a fastball and at the end of three. We're going to the top of the fourth inning in a 1 1 tie and Derek Lowe pitching to Brad Hopp for ball one. Well we mentioned when we were in Colorado Chacon had a 40 pitch inning in the third inning today he had a 38 pitch. Inning. 2 and 0 to Brad Hopp. Hop single to right to drive in Aaron Miles in the first inning. Hitting 392. That's his right. Two and one. So low is even now. He had made 47 pitches at the end of three. Chacon more than 75. Breaking ball. Hop is on it. A uh, two ball one strike curveball and he straightened it out. So Brad Hopp is two for two. Rockies have a couple of fine looking young hitting outfielders. And Hopp is one of them. Corey Sullivan another. Michael Restovich yet another. And of course they they have the veteran like Moore and another fine young hitter Matt Holliday and then you toss in Preston Wilson. It's a, some good hitting outfielders. There goes Hop hitting ground ball to Kent. They get one and they're going to get two. Oh, what a great play by Kent. It looked like a ground ball out to the second baseman and Jeff thinking two. And he got rid of that thing so quickly that Atkins never had a chance to beat the throw to first. The double play, four, six, three. Quick feed by Kent. And then his tourist turned it nicely. So four, six, three, two down. Dustin Moore, the batter. Chopper to the hole. There's his tourist. Leaps in the air, but didn't have a grip. So he never threw the ball wisely. Infield single for Moore. Great effort by his tourist. And Todd Green coming up. I thought we were going to have a replay of that play he made last night, where somehow his tourist jumps in the air and not only makes the off the ground throw but with a lot on it but that time he didn't have a grip if he had tried to throw it it would have landed in Pasadena green flied to right in the second inning right Frank Robinson and the Washington Nationals the formerly Montreal Expos will be in here tomorrow night. Oh and one. Popped up. Valentine in foul ground. So no runs, two hits. The double play was a big one. And at the end of three and a half, a one-one time. Put your thinking cap on. Here's our trivia question. 
J.D. Drew, one of the top five picks in the MLB draft, twice. Who's the only player ever selected number one overall? Twice. When J.D. was drafted, first time in history, his brother was also drafted. His brother, Tim. That's right. And by the way, Tim, a pitcher, is trying to make it out of AAA to the big leagues with the Colorado Rockies. Here's Repco. 0 oh 2. Jason, as we said, feels terrible, but he's playing. 0 oh 2. No balls and two strikes. The Rockies have had such a tough time on the road, one and nine. Even though they've had some outstanding play by a couple of young players, that's in the dirt, one and two. The one Rockies win against Philadelphia. But they must hate to come here. You know, the Rockies haven't won a series in Los Angeles in four years, not since August of 2001. In fact, Colorado now has a span of 10 series where they haven't won any. They've lost seven and split three. They are seven and 24 in games played here lately. Well, Chacon at it again. His pitch count 18 in the first, 21 in the second, 38 in the third. High fly ball to center. Corey Sullivan is there. So Repco a fly ball, one away in the fourth inning. And the batter, Jason Good Phillips. Up, catcher, Jason Phillips. Chacon trying to lead the Rockies out of the wilderness. The Rockies have lost four straight. And if you go back to last year, they are a ball club that must hate to leave Coors Field. They've dropped 13 of the last 14 road games, 18 of the last 20. Get rained out, you have a victory party. One ball and no strikes to Jason Phillips. That's a strike. One and one. Phillips just missed in the second inning. Hit a towering fly ball. Dustin Moore caught it on the warning track in left field. Jason slapped his hands together in frustration at first base. Breaking ball hit wide a third to Atkins. Two down. Okay. You know the trivia question. Do you know the answer? Pitcher, Question had to do with J.D., one of the top five picks in the MLB draft twice. He's the only player ever selected number one twice. Danny Goodwin with the White Sox and the Angels. Yeah, I hear you. A number one pick twice. Derek Lowe flied to center in the third inning 0 for 1. Fastball whacked and grabbed by Miles. So Lowe lines out to Aaron Miles. Dog is gone in order first time. And at the end of four a 1 1 time. Going on from Lexus and by Southwest Airlines nonstop service to over 59 destinations across the country. We have a 1 1 tie as we go to the fifth inning. It will be Corey Sullivan, Sean Chacon, and then Aaron Miles. Sullivan beat one right down in front of the plate, thrown out by Phillips. Fouled away. Sullivan batting 393. You know what we're doing in the booth? Always like to uh, drop the other shoe. And we had that trivia question. The only player to be drafted number one twice. And then you say, 
Danny Goodwin. You're not talking about Stan Musial or J.D. Drew. And you say to yourself, what the heck ever happened to Danny Goodwin? Ground ball to Kent. One away. So we were looking up. Danny was from St. Louis. For the Rockies, pitcher Sean played with Cole. the Angels. Never a lot. Fifty some odd at bats would be the most. Played with the Angels, Minnesota, and Oakland. Pop fly, Kent going out and fighting the sun makes the catch. Using every trick in the book. He somehow or other found the ball and made the catch. Second baseman, Aaron Miles. Two down, Aaron Miles coming up. Trying to catch it sideways. When you played as long as Jeff has played, there's a lot of things you can do to try and cut down the glare. He just tried everything and made the play. A strike, Aaron Miles. So anyway Danny Goodwin did have seven years in the big leagues. One ball and one strike to count. Seven years he hit 13 home runs. That's what's so tough. There's a kid everybody thought was going to be a great player. Line drive out. And that was his career. Okay, Rockies are done at the end of four and a half, a one-one tie. One-one tie, bottom of the fifth inning. Cesar Torres shows bunt, ball one. As Torres flied to left, single to center, advanced on Sullivan's error, and eventually scored the Dodger run. And Chacon behind to yet another hitter, two and zero. Oh. But he's tough. He's only allowed two hits. Ball three. He stopped Choi on deck. Then J.D. Drew. Right. Another strike. His tourists, of course, has played well all year, but especially in the daylight. He's hitting 423 in the daylight. Ball four. The top Dodger hitter in the sunlight is Milton Bradley, who's not playing today. Now batting. Don't forget First Tuesday at 710, the Washington Nationals $2 True Blue Tuesday, presented by General Motors. You can get top deck, reserve level, pavilion tickets for just two bucks. Purchase them online, Ticketmaster outlet locations, or at the Dodger Stadium advanced ticket window. There's tourists at first, nobody out. He stopped Choi, flied to center. He had a change up and just missed hitting it out, and then walked. And there's Chacon again behind. He's been behind all day, and yet 1-1. Dodgers left the bases loaded in the third when he struck out both Lede and Ballantin. Lede on a slow curve in the dirt, and Ballantin on a fastball. 1-0. Ball two. He had made. 88 pitches through four innings did Chacon. So he's spending all his bullets here. 2 0. Oh. There goes his tourist fouled away. So the Dodgers put on the hit and run. Choi fouls it off. Two and one to count. I'll tell you what's so tough about that. It is really a gamble to play hit and run when you have a pitcher who can't find the strike zone. Joy got a bit of it, fouled it off. Two and one. Of course, with his tourists, maybe not that much of a gamble. But he's only one for two in stolen bases. Two and one to Joy. 
long drive down the right field line that's going to roll to the corner chasing it out there is hop they will hold his tourists at third on the double by he Choi. joy. So the Dodgers are in business as Choi doubles into the right field corner his tourist stopping at third with nobody out for Choi his third double he has three home runs and seven RBI's to go along with it. So second and third nobody out and J.D. Drew who has walked twice coming up with Jeff Kent on deck and they are moving the furniture in the Colorado bullpen. Off speed ball one though he changed with a little curveball. Sixty seven mile an hour curve Marcos Carvajal who at one time was in the Dodger organization. He's only 20 and he's throwing in the Rockies bullpen. Ball two. So Chacon tied one one but he is really struggling one hundred pitches and he's in the fifth inning with nobody out. That's a struggle. Two and all. Ball three. Chacon was a quarterback in football. He was also a basketball player. He's an excellent out athlete. He's six three, about two fifteen. But boy, is he laboring. Now they're going to walk Drew for the third time to load the bases with nobody out, and that will bring up Jeff Kent. With a man at first, Kent struck out in the first inning. Then in the third with the bases loaded, Kent roped a line drive single to left to drive in one. He hit it so hard, Dustin Moore caught it on a hop and got it back into the infield, so Choi had to stop at third. Well, Bob Apodaca walking out to the mound, it's a pretty tough journey for the pitching coach, among other things. Chacon has not only walked five, he has had nine three ball counts. And yet, when it's all said and done, it's 1 1. Carvajal continues to throw in the pen. All right, Bob has had his say. Goes back to the dugout, and Chacon now trying to. Fight his way out of a jungle. He did well in the third. Bases loaded to strike out Lede and Valentine. He actually retired the side in order in the fourth inning. And now he's back in the soup again. He has his tourists at third, Choi at second, and Drew at first. Nobody out. So he's not at mile high, but Chacon has to be gasping for breath now with Kent. First ball swinging and it's a pop fly but no infield fly anything but Sullivan for the catch and his tourist is coming to throw he'll beat it. When that ball was hit up in the air the first person to move on it was Aaron Miles. So when you saw Miles go out you thought they might call the infield fly rule but the ball carried far enough and so Jeff Kent who led the league in scoring fly balls last year picks up his tourist with a fly ball to center not very deep but deep enough with the speed of his tourist. So Kent picks him up that breaks the tie. First and second it is two to one Dodgers for in the fifth inning. And here is Lede. Ball one. Ricky flied to center leading off in the second inning then had a big chance in the third with the bases loaded and a classic case of trying too hard couldn't hold up on a slow curve ball in the dirt. Fastball for the umpteenth time Chacon is behind two balls and no strikes. It's remarkable that he hadn't been knocked out a couple of innings ago. Joy and Drew are out there. And ball three. Huh. 
hurdle showing great patience. Clint hadn't been feeling very well. Three and oh. And they let him rip. Fouled it off. Three and one. Time while they retrieved that ball, it caromed off the protective railing in front of the Rockies dugout. Three and one to Ricky Lede. Two to one Dodgers. Fifth inning. High pop foul off third down the line. Atkins to the top roller, but it's back in. Hoffman cashing out a sign or two to Hesop Choi and to Drew. Three and two the count. Ricky Lede has not grounded into a double play. He has struck out nine times, so that's all in the mix as to whether they're going to run or not. Three and two. The runners are not going on ball four. So that's three more walks here in the inning. Third baseman Jose Valentin. It's almost like seeing one of those those heavyweight fights where one boxer is on the ropes and he's absorbing tremendous punishment and your first thought is how can he keep standing why doesn't he go down well that's Chacon out there off speed ball one for the Dodgers remember that little pattern they didn't get a base hit in the first four innings of each of the first two games scored four runs in the fifth inning Friday five runs in the fifth inning Saturday Valentin a fly ball miles is calling so the infield fly rule is called so on a fly ball to right field first base umpire Joe Brinkman went out there and it was the infield fly even though Brad Hopp was right there capable of making a throw. So is he going to get off the hook again? Jason Repko, the batter. Chacon has walked seven, given up three hits, only two runs. Been a, a remarkable performance in that way. Curb ball, he dropped it in there. 0 and 1. That's the rare time where Sean Chacon has actually gotten the first pitch for a strike and whoops Jim Tracy does not think so. Oh and one. Another curveball. Oh and two. In the dirt squirts behind green but not far enough for Choi to advance. Choi at third drew at second Lede at first. Two out. In the dirt again, and a nice save by Todd Green. Two balls and two strikes. Chacon doing it again. This next pitch will be his 28th in the inning. Two and two. Fastball hit to Atkins, down to Miles, and he's out of the inning. 
say one thing, but Sean Ciccone is some battler. Dodgers lead two to one. On this day in 1920, the Dodgers and Boston Braves played a rather historic 26 inning game, ended up in a tie. Joe Oscar and Leon Cador, the pitchers, went all the way. And the time of game, three hours and 50 minutes. But you know what? The next day, the Dodgers played in Philadelphia, lost it in 13 innings. The day after, they played Boston again and lost in 19 innings. Let's go back to this one. And ball one to Desi Relliford. Yeah, that was some string, wasn't it, of extra inning games? 26, 13, and 19. First three days of May. Right. But then come to think of it, maybe the most amazing thing about that streak, that 26 inning game only took three hours and 50 minutes. One and one. Little chopper to Choi. He'll hang it for Derek coming over. One out. Betting next, first baseman, Todd Holcomb. You wonder just how long Chacon will stay in the game. He's had a 21 pitch inning, a 38 pitch inning, and a 28 pitch inning. The one thing for sure, Sean is big and strong. Helton twice flied to right. The second time, he almost hit it out. Ball one. On this day in 1965, actually it was a night game, and the Dodgers playing the Giants here at Dodger Stadium. Tommy Davis. The National League batting champion twice, the left fielder for the Dodgers, broke his ankle sliding into second base. And I think everybody in the ballpark thought, well, there goes any possibility of the of the pennant. So the Dodgers, losing the great player, dipped down into the minors and brought up a colorful character by the name of Lou Johnson. And as the fates would have it, five months later, Lou Johnson hit the game winning home run in the World Series. That sounds like a movie script. Against the Minnesota Twins. Two to one Dodgers. Sixth inning one out. Line drive base hit. So Helton comes up with his first hit to go one for three. And the batter will be Brad Hopp. Right fielder Brad Hopp. Red Hop two for two. So Helton hitting it. Actually, I'm sure if you're Derek Lowe, you thought that was right at your head. It wasn't quite. Ball one. Top 6'2, 200 pounder. He'll be 26 near the end of June. A graduate of a great baseball program at LSU. He's from Fort Worth. Strike. One and one to count. Brad Hopp can thank first base coach Davey Collins for helping him. Become a better outfielder. Davey had a great career and a wonderful base dealer as well as a fine outfielder. One and one. Two to one Dodgers. Top of the six. One out. Ball two. Hop has some sock. He hit as many as 31 home runs. In Colorado Springs, behind him, Garrett Atkins fouled away. Two and two.
Washington Nationals here starting tomorrow night. Esteban Loiza and Scott Erickson. Tuesday night, if his infected ear condition has cleared up, Zach Day and Jeb Weaver. Wednesday night, Levon Hernandez and Odalis Perez. Meanwhile, Derek Lowe trying to balance his books. He is one and two. Two and two to Hobb. And he hits one to left, fighting that glare and staying with it is Ricky Lede. Two out. Now we mentioned at the start of the game how base runners run on low. He gave up 34 stolen bases last year. This year, they have been successful eight out of nine against him. Helton over there at first base is one for one in stolen bases. He has never been a big threat on the bases. Most he's ever had would be seven. But with low working, we'll see if Hurdle runs him. That's a strike. Oh and one. Garrett Atkins, he was born in Orange and lives in Irvine, went to UCLA. One of those guys, first at bat in the big leagues, he had a two run double. That was two years ago. One and one the count to Garrett. Six feet three, 210. And as we've mentioned, because it is a terrific note, the only three time All American in UCLA history. At one time in college, he had a 33 game hitting streak. Did he? Yes, he did, says Joe Brinkman. One and two to Garrett. He opened that stands up last year. In other words, he he was never quite that wide open, as good a player as he was at UCLA and in the minor leagues. Last year, he figures he can see the ball a lot better. Same thing for Luis Gonzalez, only batting left-handed. Two and two. Dodgers two runs, three hits. The Rockies one run, five hits, and one error. Dodgers received 10 walks in the first game, but had only five hits and managed to win it 6 3. Five walks last night, and they managed to win it 6 2. Seven walks so far today, and they're leading 2 to 1. That's a strike. So Atkins caught looking at a borderline fastball. I think he thought it was low. No pun intended. And it's two to one, Dodgers. Big juicy charbroiled burgers. Score one today only at Carl's Jr. By SBC going beyond the call. And by GMC. We are professional grade. We're going now to the bottom of the sixth inning. And Sean Chacon. Certainly got to hang in there today from his teammates. A tremendous effort fighting his control all the way. And he will now surrender the ball to Marcus Carvajal with two changes on the infield. Desi Relaford, who started the game at shortstop, has moved over to third. Clint Barmus, the regular shortstop who is going to get a day off, is in there now. The Dodgers will have Jason Phillips, Derek Lowe, and Cesar as tourists to face one of their own. Signed originally by the Dodgers four years ago. Now back. Marcus Carvajal spells that last name C A R V A J A L. Born in Bolivar, Venezuela. Still lives there. 6'4, 180 pounds. Bounce that one. 6'4, 180. 
He has been impressive of late. He's been in five previous games, seven innings, and has not given up a thing. So they've decided to bring him in to pitch here at Dodger Stadium. Fastball hit in the air to right field. Brad Hopp is there. One out. Carvajal was signed by the Dodgers. Camilo Pasquale suggested they should sign him back in 2000. Then the Milwaukee Brewers chose him out of the Dodger organization in the Rule 5 draft, but then they immediately Good traded Good him to the Rockies for a couple of minor leaguers and some six, money. Six, and he was on the Nakamura. Rockies opening day roster, becoming the youngest player ever to play with the team. He is 20 years old. He'll be 21 in the middle of August, and he's going to face Nori Nakamura, who will bat for Derek Lowe. So Nakamura hitting 156 picks up for Derek. Off speed for a strike on one. So Derek worked hard, went five, got into the sixth, retired the side, and they've decided to hit for him. He had one really easy inning. That was the fifth inning when Lowe made only seven pitches. Gio Carrara warming up in the Dodger bullpen. Carvajal, fastball, slider, changeup. Two and one. Low made 80 pitches while he was in there. Two and two. Be a little while to add up the pitches for Sean Chacon. I think it's like 116. 116 in five innings. Fouled away. But to Chacon's credit, I mean a big heart, he refused to quit. It wasn't his day. He was walking the house. Walked seven, allowed three hits, only two runs, kept his club in the game. The seven, a career high for Chacon. And for the Dodgers, you talk about what do they call a, a pass, a free ticket? Well, the Dodgers received 23 walks in this series so far. 23. Though Chacon really battled them. Ground ball to Helton. He will feed Marcos coming over. So two down as Nakamura grounds out. Okay. And the batter will be Cesar as tourist. His tourist flied to left, single to center and scored, walked and scored. That's another interesting thing about the walks. The Dodgers have received seven walks. Only one scored. Fastball to the screen, ball one. Two runs, three hits for the Dodgers, one run, five hits for the Rockies. Dodgers trying to win three in a row. Rockies trying to snap a four game losing streak. Fouled away. Dodgers in five innings have stranded eight. So they haven't made it easy for Tracy, despite all the gifts. Ball two, two and one. So a 20 year old coming in to try and restore order. Yeah. 
And that's going to be hit into right field. Base hit for Asturias. Over to get the ball is Hop. Fumbles out of haste. He knew it was Asturias and he knew that he was motoring. And Brad trying to hurry up and get the ball kicked it. But they will probably rule it a double. Because he was way over in right center and had to come back to get it. And a clean sweep couldn't do it. So for is Turris another multi hit game that would be his 14th multi hit game and here's he Choi. joy. Ball one. Two runs four hits for the Dodgers now. Two out. Ball two. Choi has flied to center, walked in the third inning, and doubled in the fifth. Shot back to Carvajal. Oh, what a nice play to take a base hit away from Choi and retire the side. Ball was sharply hit, and young Marcus made a good play. And at the end of six, two to one, trust a two to one lead to Giovanni Carrara. And Gio will be pitching to Dustin Moore, Todd Green, and Corey Sullivan in his 10th game. And with a record of three and zero, oh, trying to save this thing for starter Derek Lowe. Dustin Moore grounded to third, single to short, out of Mississippi by way of the University of Alabama. 0 and one. Moore, besides being a Major League Baseball player, is a huge NFL fan, and especially the Denver Broncos and John Elway. 0 oh and 1. Fouled away. They say that anytime Dustin Moore's team, whether it's the Giants or the Rockies, but anytime his team needs a, a win, he leaves two tickets for Elway. <laughs> Even if Elway's in Yugoslavia, he'll leave two for him. 0 oh and 2 to Dustin. Ball one. Gio Carrara. Two innings a couple of days ago, you may remember against Arizona, he struck out five in the two innings. One ball and two strikes to Dustin Moore. Breaking ball. Dustin, a hard nosed player. You remember when he was with the Giants? Boy, he gave them 100% all the time. 6'1, 215. Went to the University of Alabama. Two and two. Ball three. Moore doesn't have a lot of power. He's hit as many as 12 from Minnesota. He hit seven last year for the Giants. Three and two. Oh, good fastball, and it had movement on it at the last moment. It just seemed to jump away. So more down on strikes, one out. For the Rockies. Todd Pitcher, Green Todd coming Green. up. Interesting when the game started, Derek Lowe struck out Miles and it cost him a run. He had only one other strikeout. And now Carrara gets a K and now works on Green. Fastball for a strike on one. Green 0 for 1 in the past against Carrara. 
Corey Sullivan on deck. Left hand hitter. Foul back. One other thing if you're not keeping score remember Clint Barmas the red hot rookie shortstop in that double switch Barmas bats ninth. Green flied to right fouled out to third Todd 0 for 2. Hitting 265. One and two. Rockies got a run in the first inning. Miles struck out on a wild pitch. Two outs later, he scored on a base hit by Brad Hobb. Jeff Kent lined a single to drive in a run in the third, and the Dodgers got the go ahead run in the fifth. When his tourists walk, Choi doubled him to third. And is Torres able to come home on a fly ball to center? And that's it. Dodgers have cluttered the bases, leaving nine in six innings. They've received seven walks. Two and two. Off speed, fouled away. The green giving Gio Carrara a battle. Two balls, two strikes. Up the middle, here comes his tourist. Green had a tough break because the ball hit the side of the mound and that took all the steam out of it. If it doesn't hit the side like that, his tourist probably couldn't have caught up to it. So two down. And the batter, Corey Sullivan, 0 for 2. Against Derek Lowe, Sullivan hit one right out in front of the plate, and then last time up, grounded to the right side. Right, 0 and 1 to Sullivan. Corey out of Wisconsin went to school at Wake Forest on the corner 0 and 2. He was rehabbing a year ago and lived with Matt Holliday and now they're teammates with the Rockies. Sullivan was on the DL all last year. An outfielder who suffered and had to have the Tommy John surgery. Well, Ferrara comes in, retires the side, strikes out two, and the Dodgers lead two to one. Oh, sure. Lots of fun in the ballpark. A gorgeous day. Hope you make your plans to be with us maybe one of the next three nights. Frank Robinson bringing the Washington Nationals into the park. The pitching matchups Esteban Loiza, Scott Erickson tomorrow night, Zach Day and Jeb Weaver Tuesday, Levon Hernandez and Odalis Perez Wednesday. J.D. Drew and ball one. Young Carvajal pitching out of a stretch. Drew has walked three times today. Right. One and one to JD. One and two. It was way back in the third inning, remember? JD fooled on the ball hit by Aaron Miles. It eventually went off his glove for a double, but Miles did not score. That's the only man to get to second for 
Colorado since the first inning. Foul back. So in a tough two to one game, that was a, a huge failure on the Rockies part to cash in a big break. Relaford popped up and Helton flied to right and they left Miles at second. One and two. Slow curve. Boy, that really fooled him. So Drew strikes out, loses his bat on that big overhand curveball at 71. One out in the seventh. Second baseman, Jeff Ken. Jeff Kent struck out in the first inning, lined a single to left to drive in a run, and then last time came up with his specialty. He had 11 sacrifice flies last year, 11. And it's his scoring fly ball in the fifth inning that is the difference in the game. It got his tourist home. So he's driven in both runs. That's a strike. 0 oh 2. When the Rockies come up in the eighth inning, they will have Clint Barmas, who bats ninth, the shortstop, then Aaron Miles and Desi Relaford, and if anybody gets on, Todd Helton. Oh and 2 to Kent. Good fastball blew him away. So Carvajal, a former Dodger product, has come in. For the Dodgers, left fielder Ricky strikes out Drew and Kent. Drew on the curveball, Kent on the fastball, and now the batter is Ricky Lede. Lede would like to have an at bat back. Remember, he after flying out in the second inning, couldn't hold up on a slow curve in the dirt. And struck out with the bases loaded in the third. Did draw a walk to load the bases in the fifth. And a high fly ball to Corey Sullivan in left center. So Carvajal does well. The rookie allows one hit in two innings, and at the end of seven, two to one, Dodgers. Jim Tracy hoping to look through rose colored glasses with the Dodgers leading two to one and we go to the eighth inning Clint Barmas the outstanding rookie shortstop who hit 410 in the month of April rested for six innings and then came into the game in the double switch. Oh and one. And he's in a hole to Geo now oh and two. Barmas out of Vincennes, Indiana, went to Indiana State. Vincennes, they tell me, about three hours from St. Louis. So he grew up a Cardinals fan. Ball one. Gio Carrara, though the veteran from Venezuela, now in the game facing the rookie from Venezuela. Marcos Carvajal. One and two. Off speed, whacked into left. What a favor he did with that pitch. So a straight change up, and Barma said, Thank you so much. And a line drive single to left. Well, Barmas with his base hit. Now Miles and Relaford down in the Dodger bullpen. The side arming duo, Steve Schmoll, the right hander, Kelly Wunsch, the left hander. Miles struck out but reached on a wild pitch and scored, doubled, and lined out. Bunch in the air, caught by Carrara, who throws it away. There wasn't anybody on the bag. And coming over to finally get it is Repco. And what a big break. Meanwhile, we're watching Jeff Kent getting up very, very slowly. 
Uh, Carrara thought he had a double play but there wasn't anybody on the bag. Choi is coming in Kent certainly couldn't get over there but the throw is to the invisible man and then Kent tries to knock it down and he can't do it. So even though Miles pops the bunt up Carrara's Arab puts Barmas the tying run at second with one out. Uh, Geo draws the error. So now he's doubly angry at the change up he gave Barmas and now his error. And here is Relaford with Helton on deck. Relaford two for six against him and Helton is hitting 400 against him. The so Geo has his work cut out in the eighth Dodgers leading two to one ball one. This is really part of being a professional now for Carrara. He has to get over the pass. He has to turn it off immediately. Never mind the changeup that was single. Never mind throwing the ball away. Like the golfer who has a bad hole, goes to the next hole, he's got to blank it all out. Managers, they can't blank it out. They sit and stew. One ball, no strikes. And a strike, one and one. Desi Relaford grounded to second, popped up, grounded out again. Relaford hitting 273, trying to pick up Barmas from second to tie up the game. One and one to Desi Relaford. One and two. Relaford was born in the same town whereby J.D. Drew was born, Valdosta, Georgia. J.D. 28. Relaford is 31. He'll be 32 in September. One and two to Relaford. Fast ball, but he missed in the count two and two. Desi was playing for the Mets. He's played for a lot of teams. He played for the Mets in 2001, and he pitched in that game. Mets lost it 15 to three, so in one of those blowouts, they had Desi pitch, and he did well. 91 mile an hour fastball, they said, a 76 circle change, and a curveball. And retire the side one two three. Brown foul. In fact, it might have been a give up game for the Mets, but Desi said it is perhaps the best moment in his playing career. Said it was a dream of mine to get a chance to pitch, and there I was pitching in the big leagues and did better than I had a right to expect. Look at that. Played almost everywhere, including one game on the mound. So the only position he's failed to play is catcher. As he first came up to the Phillies nine years ago. Two balls, two strikes. Barmas at second, the tying run with one out in the eighth. Curve ball got him. The uh, Carrara breaks off a dandy and comes up with his third strikeout as Relaford goes 0 for 4. Good breaking ball. And the batter now is Todd Helton and Jim Tracy's heading for the mound. He has Kelly Wunsch down there, so you have to assume that Kelly's going to be brought in. And Geo looks like he's still muttering either about the throw to first or the change up or both, but he did a good job. And he goes out, and Kelly Wunsch comes in. We'll be back.
Two to one Dodgers in the eighth inning. The Rockies have the tying run. Clint Barmas at second. And Kelly Wunsch, who was asked to get the top left hand batters in the league, is now asked to get Todd Helton for the second time in this three game series. In the eighth inning Friday night, Wunsch was brought in to face Helton and got Todd to hit into a double play. Roundhouse curveball, but he missed ball one. Helton, two fly balls to right and single to center. Todd, one for three. Breaking ball on the outside corner, one and one. Helton came in batting 296 against left hand pitching. Waiting on deck, another left hander, Brad Hopp. One and one. Big sidearm curveball. One and two. I think it's Matt Holiday down in the Rockies dugout holding a bat. But the Dodgers have Steve Schmoll, the right hander, down in the pen. There's Holiday. One and two the count to Todd Helton. And got him on a big sweeping curveball. Well, that's pretty good. You come in and pitch to Helton twice. You get him to hit into a double play. And now you come in and strike him out. And it's still two to one Dodgers. A job well done by Kelly one And he is met by a very grateful Gio Carrara. Boy, they come out of the bullpen. They have done a marvelous job. They're somewhat overlooked, I guess, as far as reports are concerned. But the Dodger bullpen has been a tremendous surprise. Meanwhile, the Rockies' pen has not been a tremendous surprise. It's been rough going. Brian Fuentes, the left-hander from Merced, born and still lives there. Valentin turning around to bat right handed one ball and no strikes. Valentin is flied out struck out popped up. Ball two two and zero. Oh. Jose batting two hundred. The so called Mendoza line. Trying to keep his head above water. Fair ball at third. Relaford with the throw in time. So Valentin grounds to third. One out. What's been going on? Well, Desturis leading the way. He's been on base with a single and a double plus a walk to score the two runs. It was Jeff Ken who has knocked them in with a scoring fly ball and a bases loaded single. Doesn't look like much for J.D. Drew 0 for 1 and then you realize he walked three times. The rest of the lineup, a lot of collars. So now Repco walk, fly to center, hit into a force play, 0 for 2. Oh and one to Repco. One ball, one strike. I think if. Uh, if you ask Jason how do you feel right about now he would tell you if I worked in an office I wouldn't go into work. But when you are battling to impress the manager. If you can possibly play you play. Little foul. One and two. Uh, Jason was saying he was so upset. He almost up Chuck in the outfield. Two balls, two strikes. Brian Flinney, 6'4, 220, working on Repco. Big breaking ball, I believe, hit him. Yep. So Repco is nicked by the pitch. For Jason, that's the fourth time that he's been hit by a pitch. Catcher, Jason Big sweeping curve ball and just got him on the back leg. Dodgers 
Dodgers were retired in order only in the fourth inning. They left eight. They have certainly not taken advantage of getting seven walks today. 23 walks in the three games. And here is Jason Phillips, fly to left, grounded to third, fly to right. Jason hitting 288. So it's been Chacon, Carvajal, and Fuentes. Chacon pitched a very gutsy five innings. He made 116 pitches in five innings. Drive to center. Sullivan is there. So Phillips a fly ball for the second out, and the Dodgers now will send up Almedo signs, and he will bat for Kelly Wunsch. Your attention, please, for the Dodgers batting for Wunsch, number eight, Almedo signs. Uh, Tracy making notes as signs comes up. Olmedo is hitting 355 coming off the bench. He is two for five with a couple of RBIs. And they're going to keep an eye on Repco. Repco is two for two in stolen bases. Off speed. Signs played last night, went 0 for 4, but did score a run. As Tracy calls him, a very professional hitter. When the Rockies come up in the ninth inning, they have Hop, then the pitcher spot, and more. And among others, Matt Holliday figures to see some action. One ball, one strike. Two to one, Dodgers, two down. Repco over there at first. Drawing yet another throw. Brian Fuentes has been a very consistent reliever the last three years for the Rockies. Last year he hurt his back and that really hurt the Rockies bullpen without him. Foul ball. One and two. So Almeido signs battling and a 1 2 count. Washington Nationals here tomorrow night. Signs 1 for 2 in the past against Brian Fuentes. Because Fuentes leans so much in his delivery, he has trouble holding the runners on, so he has to throw over there a lot. Foul back. One thing, Fuentes hit 89, and he can hit 90 on the gun. Left-handers, not many of them throw hard, and certainly not many left-handed side armors, but Fuentes fulfills the bill. Well, signs giving it a battle, and the count goes to two and two. Waiting his turn on deck, Cesar is tourist. The Fuentes realizing the runners like to go on him because as he starts his delivery he's pretty well straight up and then he bends and when he bends to get the arm angle that's when the runners usually try to go on him. 
There he been. Signs meanwhile pops it up. Helton backtracking. Behind him is Miles, but Helton's the taller of the two, and Todd made the catch. So the Dodgers leave Repko, who was hit. They're heading for the ninth, two to one, Dodgers. Two to one Dodgers and we have reached the ninth inning another fine crowd on a beautiful Sunday afternoon the paid attendance to see Yancey Brazaban try and close up shop forty six thousand two hundred and forty three forty six two forty three so Brazaban in the absence of Eric Gagne has been the closer and he's done a great job. And now he'll face Brad Hop. Fastball. Ball one. That didn't break 90. Most of the time Brazaban comes in and amazes you. His first pitch is usually 95. But that was only 89. Foul back. That was 92. Preston Wilson is out on deck. So Wilson will be batting for the pitcher Fuentes. Breaking ball missed two and one. Brad Hop single to right twice fly to left. Brazaban trying to close it up at his expense. Brazaban has seven saves. Ball three. Hop has read the scouting report. You get fastballs in the 90s, hard slider. Three and one. Fastball. In looking at Yancey's numbers, you always look strikeouts and walks. He's two and a half to one. Ten strikeouts, four walks. Dodgers two runs four hits Rockies one run six hits the Rockies have only played one one run game and they won it at home for the Dodgers this would be their fifth Luis Gonzalez now comes out of the dugout and he will take the place of Preston Wilson. Your attention, please, for the Rockies. Been shooting for Fuentes, number four, Luis Gonzalez. So Luis Gonzalez coming up to bat four Fuentes and not Preston Wilson. And for Brad Hop, he's been on base three times, two singles and a walk. So Hop, the tying run at first. And here is Luis Gonzalez from Maracay in Venezuela. And that gets away but not far enough. Hop remains at first. The contrast where the Dodgers have received seven walks from Colorado pitches and 23 walks in the series. That walk to Hop here in the ninth inning was the first walk the Dodgers have received. Chacon was more than generous but he battled like a tiger walked seven in five innings made 116 pitches but only gave up two runs. Meanwhile Gonzo having trouble getting a bunt down and the count one and one. So hop the tying run at first. The normal rule in baseball you play to win on the road you play to tie at home but at least for the moment the Rockies are playing to tie going for the bunt. One and one. Gonzalez 0 for 1 in the past against Brazaban. And bunts it foul and the count 1 and 2. Sometimes when things are really going well for a ball club and you're in a situation like this you ask the guy to bunt he fouls off a couple so you take the bunt off and he gets a base hit something wonderful happens. 
with the Rockies who have won only one game on the road. We'll see if anything wonderful happens. Rockies are one and nine on the road. The only victory in Philadelphia. Going back to last year they've lost 13 of the last 14 18 of the last 20 on the road. Full swing. Got a piece of it lost the bat the ball goes to the screen. And the count is still one and two. The hop will go back to first and Gonzalez. Will try it again. He was originally drafted by the Indians and was selected by the Rockies in the Rule 5 draft two years ago. Hop at first, one out, or excuse me, nobody out, a one run difference. One and two. Oak foul lost his bat again. So young Luis Gonzalez, he's 25. At least he's getting a piece of the ball as he loses the bat, and Brad Hop, the tying run, stands at first. Well, Gonzo couldn't get the bunt down. Now he's trying to stay alive at the plate. He had sacrificed twice this year for Clint Hurdle. One and two. That's a part of Brazzaban's game that he's learning, holding runners on. There goes Hop. The pitch is missed. The bat is lost. The play is safe at second. Boy, that's some at bat. And wait a minute, they're going to call interference. That's what they're doing, and here comes Clint Hurdle to argue. The so Luis Gonzalez lost his bat on three swings and apparently staggered, interfered with Phillips, and Hop, who had the play beaten at second, is called out, and there you have a double play. And Hurdle says, What next? See what Gonzo did. He walked right in front of Phillips. So Gonzalez had a very bad at bat. He lost his bat and then steps. I mean, it was so obvious to stand in front of the catcher. Maybe he was kind of in a daze over losing his bat on three pitches, but whatever. He blunders into the double play. So two down in the ninth. And here is Dustin Moore. Ball one. Boy, lose your bat on three straight swings. That's something. And then to walk in front of the catcher. Hmm. One ball and no strikes. Look out. Oh, did he get that one right in the small of the bat? Wow. Moore didn't like it at all, but who would when you get nailed? By a pitch in the 90s. That was clocked at 94. That would almost knock the number off your uniform. I mean, sometimes you take one for the club, but boy, that was ripped. Mm. So, two out in a little bit of a bizarre ninth inning, and Todd Green will be coming up. I think Moore's reflex was more out of just being hurt. You notice in last night's game when Brad Penny was struck on the foot I mean he slammed his bat down he was furious but he was just angry over being hit 
I think more of the same thing. And boy, to take a 94 mile an hour fastball right in the small of the back. Hmm. Joe Brinkman over to talk to him. So from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, by way of the University of Alabama, Dustin Moore is at first base. The tying run with two out in the ninth. And Todd Green, the batter. Todd Green flied to right, fouled out to third, grounded to short. Moore has been on the DL, so he hadn't played much. He's only been in three games. Consequently, he has not done any running at all. And that's foul back into fastball alley, indeed. Straight back upstairs, 0 and 1. That was 94. He gets so accustomed to seeing Brazaban come in and throw 95 and 96. He hadn't gotten that high yet. 0 and 1 to count. One and one. For Dustin Moore, even when he plays a lot, he has never been much of a base stealing threat. He's high in the big leagues, six. One and one. Foul back. Another fastball, another foul ball back. On the scoreboard, Arizona leading San Diego five to one in the ninth inning. And this big crowd, 46,243, and everybody up. One and two to Todd Green. Two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. One run, six hits for the Rockies. If the Dodgers win this game, they will have swept the series, and they will have been out hit in every game. Breaking ball gets way back to the screen. Moore to second and holes. So in the inning, you had a walk. Then you had Gonzalez trying to sacrifice, interfering with the catcher on an attempted stolen base for a double play. Then you had Moore hit by a pitch, and now on a wild pitch, Moore is the tying run at second base. Two and two the count to Todd Green. Now Jason going out to talk, so time out. Washington here tomorrow night. Dodgers, by the way, are in their fifth game that could be decided by one run, and they have split the previous four. Tomorrow night, Esteban Loaiza and Scott Erickson. Tuesday night, Zach Day and Jeb Weaver. Wednesday night, Levon Hernandez and Odalis Perez. All right, more at second, two out, two and two to Green. And a high fly ball to left field today, shy of the track, will make the catch. So the Dodgers hang on to win it two to one. Yancey Brazaman made eight pitches last night, but he had to make 19 today, but he hung on. Two runs, four hits in an era, and both Dodger runs knocked in by Jeff Kent, who's our player of the game. The Rockies, one run, six hits, and an era, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 